All right, hope you're ready for a good video that has to do with IDs. This video is actually going to refresh something that we've already talked about in some of the other level lessons, but it's a good time to review it now because uh, for this lesson, what you're going to be asked to do is analyze code instead of write code. And so I just want to refresh two things you're going to see in the code that you're going to be asked to read in the challenges. Uh, first, let's look at this little program we made here. Like I said, we won't be writing any code. We're just going to sort of analyze the code that's already existing. I have a door here, or a base. And you can see it's spitting out soldiers. And they have a little number written under here. And you'll see that all the soldiers that come out of this base have the number a million. And all the soldiers that come out of this base have the number a million and one. What this is, is as the base randomly produces the soldiers, I'm giving each soldier its own variable that keeps track of which base it came from. And why might I be doing that? Because when I click on the base, it's like the hurry up, come back, we're under attack, and now they all start coming back. When I click this one, all the soldiers that uh, were made or belong to this base all start walking back and stop. Now you'll see the base is still producing people coming out. So when I click, it's any soldier that currently exists ends up coming back to uh, help out the base. And you can see here we had made quite a few over the time there. Now, let's look at the code that makes this happen. The first thing I've done here, and what you have to remember, is every base has an ID. And just when I hover the mouse over this base here, I can actually, oh, I don't get to see the ID. But that one is ID a million. As you can see when it runs the game, this is actually the first piece made. So I already know it's going to be a million, even though that doesn't really matter too much. And this one comes out to be a million and one. Now, when these bases make soldiers, you're going to see what I've given every single soldier in their create event. I've given them a variable called base ID. And technically, this base ID should be set to negative four. Keep in mind that, remember, negative 4 is that magic value that sort of means, yeah, I am not an instance, or this ID is a non-existent object in the room. So every soldier keeps track of the base ID that it came from. And the coming back variable, that, as you can guess, is a variable that when it gets turned to 1, the soldier is going to come back to the base. So let's see how we actually tell the soldier about its home base. When the base step method runs, I'm picking a random number here, and I'm deciding whether or not to make a soldier. If I do decide to make a soldier, I make the soldier, and just use the variable here, Bob. I give him a direction, I give him a speed, and here's the key. Bob, set your base ID variable equal to my ID. Now remember that this is the base running this code. So Bob, set your base ID variable equal to my ID variable. So if the base was base a million and one, that soldier is now keeping track in base ID, storing the value a million and one. That way if he ever has to go home again, he knows he just has to go home towards object instance one million and one. And you'll see that in the uh, in the step event of the soldier in a bit. Now let's take a peek here when this actually gets used by the soldier. Okay. Now that's what those numbers were. You'll see here in the draw event of the soldier, you'll see that's the number I was drawing the entire time. I'm drawing out that base ID variable. That's why you're always seeing a million or a million and one when we have two bases. <coughs> Now, when I click on the base, here's one key part, which is going to have a little bit of review and a little bit of new stuff. When I left press a base, this is the code I have. And I'm going to write a second piece of code that's exactly the same to stress an idea here. In the last lesson or two, we've looked at controlling an object by using its ID. So we've done stuff like this. We could say with nearest ghost, you know, do some code. And this variable nearest ghost or nearest monster, 
that was the ID of one individual instance. This time when I'm using the with, it is something we've done before, but just want to stress it. You can just name an object type, like O soldier. When you do this code, every single soldier on the screen is going to run the code that you put in here. So GameMaker will go through Soldier 0, Soldier 1, Soldier 2, Soldier 3. It's whole list of soldiers, and they each run this code in turn. Now, if you can imagine you're the soldier, what I'm trying to ask here is a base has been clicked, right? We have to remember where we're coding. So a certain base has been clicked. And what I want to ask is I want to see if that soldier is from that base that was clicked, then that soldier should come back. So what I need to do is I need to get every single soldier on the screen to ask is say, hey, am I from this base? If I am, I better start coming back. And you can see here, coming back equals one. Now, the way I've done this, and it's part of when you use the with statements, is you have to remember that some of you might be thinking, why not just do this? I'm coding inside of a base, why not just have this code here and say, with every soldier, the soldier should ask, if its base ID equals the ID of the base, come back. That's good logic, but the syntax is wrong. You have to remember that once you start doing this with soldier, this ID variable is the soldier's ID variable. What I want to use there is I need the base that was clicked its ID should be here. So the soldier can say, is my base ID equal to the ID of the base that was just clicked? That's what this is up here. Okay, this is one way to do it. This type of variable here is a local variable. Once this sort of piece of paper or the script is finished, this variable is going to be thrown away. Okay, it's gone. But the nice thing about these local variables is that they're not affected by the with statement. And so that's why it makes this a great idea, this base ID. So what I do before I go into the with statement, I'm going to capture in a variable the value of this base that was clicked, its ID. And so that's what this is, this base ID. You do have to use a semicolon. Well, you sort of do and you sort of don't. You should or you'll get a red line here, but when you run the program, it'll actually work. But I'd put the semicolon there if I were you. Then I say that this base ID, this local variable I just made, equals the ID of the object I'm in, which is the base. So if this base is a million and one, this base ID is a million and one. Then I go and get every single soldier to ask, is my base ID equal to a million and one? If it is, set myself to coming back. And then in the step event, that makes the person come back. And so that's one way to do this. Okay? And it's a common problem when you go inside of with statements, but you still want to use variables outside from the original object. Now, some of you might be saying, I remember we did this without using the local variables. And you're right. This is the other way you could do it. Uh, for reasons when your code gets more complicated, it's not the way I would prefer to do it, but it will work, is whenever you're inside of a with statement, if you do need to use a variable from the original object, which is the base, that's what we're coding in, then you could just do this. You could say other. So other takes you outside of the with statement back into your original object, and then I could go with other ID. Now, you may say to yourself, that's a lot shorter. It saves me that uh, these two extra lines here, I'm just going to do that. And that's totally fine if that's what you want to do. But just trust me, later on, um, using the word other a lot in your code starts to sort of get hard to understand the code. This, as you read it, probably you can see, even though it's a little longer, reads a little nicer. And if you're going to keep using this variable, this base ID, inside more complicated code, it's just nice to have it renamed like that instead of just other ID the whole way down the page. But either way, 
both of these work exactly the same. Okay. So that's sort of what you have to know for today. I'll just finish this off to show you how the soldier walks back. You'll see here in the step event, whoops, step event of the soldier, you'll see that all I ask is if my coming back variable has been set to 1, then find the direction from my xy to my base's id x and my base's id y. And remember, that's the id of one of your bases. Then I also ask if the distance between me and my base is less than 30, I stop, and coming back equals 0. Okay, so that's sort of it. They just stop there. So just a simple basic example here. Anyways, that's the uh, march on example. Okay, and remember the key point there was just to let you know about this here. So when you see this and this, you're not confused. And if you end up seeing this in some sample code, that doesn't confuse you either. Now, the challenges for this lesson are going to be to read some code and basically figure out what the code does just by reading the code, okay, and not running the program. But of course, the programs are there in the drive. So have fun with that one. Uh, you may find it mentally consuming trying to read the code. Uh, that's exactly what it's supposed to be, right? Sort of get your brain working in a different way. Good luck with that.